never in a city. Treatment centers connected with churches, yes, but not the sanitarium. That's to be out in the country. Outside of every major city, there are to be sanitariums so that we can take the sick and suffering out of the city and let them come in contact with nature and nature's God. God would have a health institution established which will, in its influence, be closely connected with the closing work for fitting up for immortality. One that would have no tendency to weaken the religious principles of old or young and which would not improve the health of the body to the detriment of spiritual growth. You can see the emphasis. It's not just on getting people quickly well and sending them out. It is to save their souls. That's what the sanitarium was designed for. It wasn't to make healthy sinners. It is to get people ready for heaven, to make men altogether whole. This is from 1T 564. The great object of this institution should be to improve the health of the body that the afflicted ones may more highly appreciate eternal things. It is this object, if this object is not continually set before the minds and efforts are not made to this end, then it would prove a curse instead of a blessing. If all we're doing is trying to treat the sick, and that's it, and we're never taking time to teach them God's law, bring them to know the great physician, to explain to them the urgency of the hour to get their sins into that sanctuary before probation closes, if we're not doing that, then God says, don't go to the trouble of establishing these institutions. That's what they're for. If we don't do this, there'll be a curse instead of a blessing, and spirituality will be regarded as a secondary thing. And the health of the body and diversion will be made primary. So it is not just a place to treat the sick. Okay? It's a Bethel. Twenty-five years ago, this is from First Manuscript Releases, page 241. Twenty-five years ago, the Lord revealed to me that the best way in which to reach the higher classes is through our sanitariums. No. No. You might want to know, where have these councils been all these years? <laughs> Do you see now, again, I just bring this up gently, why the Lord tells us as a people, repent. You see, because we haven't done what the Lord has asked us to do. His heart is breaking for you and me and for a world that has not yet been warned we, we don't have to think that we can develop a plan that will be better than what the Lord has revealed. What we have done, unfortunately, is we have looked at the world and we've modeled our health institutions after the hospitals of the world. And so we have big hospital systems, and I'm thankful that God has blessed to the degree that we've been able to minister some through that, but we can't, it would be like bringing Cain's offering, okay? Lord, look what we've done. And the Lord says, I can't accept that. That's not what I wrote for you to do. You know, I appreciate, you know, your, your earnestness, you know, but it's not mine. It's of the world, and I can't endorse it as genuine part of medical missionary work. I was down in Florida not too long ago, and I was listening to some of the statistics about our hospital systems down there. 
And it was amazing to me. Do you know that unfortunately in almost all of our hospitals there, the maximum of work workers that are Seventh-day Adventists is somewhere in the range of 10 to 15 percent in these big hospitals. Okay? Yeah. And so you can see that when you, when you have a dilutional effect like that, that it's going to change the ministry because these were to be exclusively Seventh-day Adventist. Yeah. Um, so anyway, 25 years ago, the Lord revealed to me the best way in which to reach the higher classes is through our sanitariums. And here, Pastor, these institutions are to be located away from the cities and are to be surrounded with land enough to enable fruit and produce to be grown. Now, why do you think that is? I mean, we're talking about health. What in the world? Agriculture, land enough to grow food. Why? Patients could go out. They could be, yeah, but what else? What else? All right, better food, self-sufficient, because we are coming to the time when we, our sanitariums were to be, if you'll read in other places like volume eight, they were to be what Joseph was in Egypt and Daniel was in Babylon, okay? We are, God wants to save this world, right? And so the refugees that are coming out of the cities, where are they gonna be taken? God wanted to have a system already in place that we don't have to depend upon the world. It doesn't matter whether we can buy or sell from the world. We are a little self-sufficient entity. Not self-sufficient, we are God-sufficient, okay? You see, God already had that place in his mind. That was the, another art to build for the saving of this world, okay? now. We're not there. It may be a little late to do all that the Lord had designed for us to do, but as in our educational councils, he tells us we can still do much, okay? We can't accomplish all that we could have done had we started earlier, but we can still do much. But we're gonna have to work with God's plan. We can't go on and just saying, well, Lord, you'll just have to accept it because this is, this is our offering. No, we're going to have to repent and reform and ask the Lord to now help us to work and gain the time, the, gain the back, what, redeem the time. That's what I'm thinking of. Thank you, sister. Redeem the time and try to do the best we can now and not further depart, go further and further back into Babylon. You see, that's why one of the statements was the church is in retreat, you see, and we need to go forward. We need to stop that, halt that. The standard bearers need to raise up the standard. And you remember the vision that the troops were back there and they were hollering at the standard bearers, bring back the standard. And the standard bearers were saying, no, you come up to the standard, okay? And these are the standards that God has for us. Now, let no one, where is this quote from? This is from 1T 561. Let no one obtain the idea that the health institution is to be a place for them to come and to be raised up by the prayer of faith. It's interesting. That is the place to find relief from disease by treatments and right habits of living, and then to learn how to avoid sickness. But if there is one place under heaven more than another where soothing, sympathizing prayer should be offered, 
by men and women of devotion and faith. It is at such an institution. So yes, we pray, but we work. And we do the methodology that God has given us to do, right? The simple therapies, the water treatments, and so forth. Those who treat the sick should move forward in their important work with strong reliance upon God for His blessing to attend the means which He has graciously provided. You'll notice the difference? We come up with the drugs, but God has created material that He provides, and He says, I will bless these. Okay. And to which He has in mercy called our attention to as a people, such as pure air, cleanliness, healthful diet, proper periods of labor, and then rest, and the use of water. This is where we need some instruction in hydrotherapy. By his own working agencies, his own. Who are his working agencies, do you think? Think of all of his agencies that he employs. How were Jesus' miracles performed? Do you remember the two means? You'll read about it. When Jesus spoke and it was accomplished. Who was doing that? Were there agencies employed? There were angels that were working at His command. The Holy Spirit was at work, you see. By His own working agencies, God has created material which will restore the sick to health. If men would use aright the wisdom that God has given them, this world would be a place now resembling heaven. Isn't that amazing? That's Medical Ministry, page 121. Now, we can read again, there, and with better understanding, there are many ways of practicing the healing arts, but there's just one way that heaven will approve. God's remedies are the simple agencies of nature that will not tax or debilitate the system through their powerful properties. But, and he goes through and he lists them again that we've talked about, for the one of which thousands are dying and yet these remedies are going out of date. They are out of date, okay? Why? Because their skillful use requires a work that people do not appreciate. You remember the king that the prophet called in, you know? And there, were, there was a nation that was at war and he wanted, God wanted to give him victory over them and he told him to stamp, you know, his whatever it was, staff or whatever, yeah. Was it arrows? Yeah. And he did it a few times and he said, why didn't you, you know, show some interest in this thing? and really, you know, put forth an effort because you didn't, you can't have that victory. God's people are to be active workers. We're not going to just slide into the kingdom. God wants us to work with all of our fervency. He wants us to pray without ceasing. And what is it? The violent are to take the kingdom of heaven by force, right? With our prayers and also with our labors. Now, I want us to talk now about something that has happened. For every truth of God, there is a counterfeit, right? So when God says, go this way, the enemy will be right there and say, no, this is God's way. Do it this way. And I wanted to talk to you about, just a little bit, about the training now of physicians and the practice of physicians. Do you think God had anything to say about that? How many, we don't have probably too much time this afternoon. I wish that I could share with you some of those counsels about medical education because they're, they're very eye-opening. Do we? Okay, all right. But let me, yeah, because we're going to have to move here with this. 
Let me just give you 